Hello, Shardy. Welcome back to another video. Out of all the genres you can find on YouTube, probably the most entertaining and interesting, in my opinion, is hunting content. That's right, hunting content. From Skeeter Jean. You know, I'm Skeet Hansen with the Scammatorial Investigation Unit. You've just been skeeted in 4K. All the way to Chris Hansen. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Good. Just seat right on that stool, please. Sure. No, right here, sir. No, no, I... I know. Please, right there. Maybe you're like me and you watched re-uploads of Dateline NBC to catch a predator when you were 11 years old and had just gotten an iPod Touch for Christmas and then discovered LiveLeak the same week. Christmas was f***ing ruined for me. You cannot argue that this content is not entertaining because it is. You're seeing a person confronted with a crime and watching their life flash before their eyes. And, and not just any crime too. One of the worst crimes. I like seeing people's lives get ruined for these, to be honest. You've got Chris Hansen. You've got Skeeter Jean. I mentioned him. There's another fella, Alex Rosen. Alex Rosen of Predator Poachers says the case of Jerry Case Jr. has been on their radar for almost a month. We're going to be talking about this content on YouTube today and sort of proposing a few questions that I'm going to be asking you guys and getting your opinions on what exactly the f*** is going on. First, we'll give you some examples of the best Predator content on YouTube. Chris Hansen is easily numero uno. He's the king of this thing. No, right there, please have a seat. Right there. Right there. Set the phone down, please. What is your plan here tonight? I'm Chris Hansen, the host of To Catch a Predator. I'm Chris Hansen. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> The show became a cultural phenomenon, even though it only ran for a few seasons, three full seasons, 20 episodes. That's really not that long. That's like one season of fucking... Chris Hansen has been a member of pop culture since this happened. I mean, he's sort of rode the success. He's been on every podcast you can think of. We have Chris Hansen. Hey. Chris, you welcome guys. to the show. Thank welcome to Flagrant 2. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, and have you, do you get out to Hollywood a lot? I do, because some of the production companies with which I work are based out here. He's got a couple other little shows. He confronted Onision. Greg is about as brave in person as you'd expect. The thing about dealing with a predator is you know exactly what a predator is going to do. He also appeared at Logan Paul versus Dylan Danis. In fact, Dylan, you're even a predator. You're a predator in this October 14th. I'm going to catch you. And in fact, I found an expert, because we are going to catch you. I got one more Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen. <laughs> which is hilarious. I don't know why he was there. Now, this man is a legend, right? He's not doing it as much anymore. He has handed the mantle off to younger, more bold, more brazen predator catchers. The new Chris Hansons of YouTube. These people spend their days tracking down Minecraft YouTubers and predators, one and the same, to varying degrees of success. That That's the main point here. These guys, it's not, there's not as much effort in this as there was in the Dateline NBC show. Some of the examples there are and, and, and stuff, and even one of them I've covered, or a couple of them I've covered on the channel. One of them was really popular though. Remember this f freak? Remember this guy? As long as it's um, quote unquote consensual, should be legal if that's your position. Yes, absolutely. And by consensual, I mean, of course, harm free as well. Alex Rosen gained infamy after his viral confrontation of EDP 445. The whole thing became a subject of hot debate, and it was wild, right? The police couldn't be involved, so he kind of ruined it. He kind of, he kind of, he kind of flubbed it, and then he also came out with some epic vaccination stances, which caused even more hot debate. But regardless, he's the founder of Houston's predator catching organization, Predator Poachers. You may have heard of it before. They're pretty, they're around. YouTube creator who posts videos entrapping possible. <laughs> recently arrived in the Sacramento area. He claims to catch potential sex offenders in his own sting operation, but law enforcement officials say his behavior is dangerous and he needs to stop. Back to the EDP thing. I mean, it didn't result in EDP's arrest, but it did make him a pariah of the internet. He's been virtually wiped from every single social media platform and people are incredibly dissatisfied with the man as a result of this this bust, this cupcake related bust. And also people have been calling EDPs like employers and stuff and getting him fired from jobs, which that's awesome, dude. I love that, man. It's it's pretty cool. I'd rather be in jail than get epically f trolled for my whole life. <laughs> They even call hotels to let them know that he, a predator, is staying there, alleged predator. I don't f know. How are you doing? I want to inform you about a p you have staying in your hotel. 
he tried to rape a 13 year old girl front desk to security please stop by the desk as soon as possible since the edp thing alex also confronted another youtuber the one i mentioned earlier yosaya mizukami Nice to meet you, man. Hey! Yeah, it's good to see you on video, too. Good yeah. to see you, too. Yeah, so I gotta talk to you about some stuff going on. What's up, man? Absolutely. Yeah, I know I'm just kind of curious, dude. Like, I'm just here to talk to you about what's going on, stuff like that, all right? Sure. I don't like this guy. He proclaimed that he was the, the new Messiah, a.k.a. Jesus Christ reborn. He also promoted his various taboo ideologies and his sick perversions. So this fucker Josiah was exposed at one point and he wasn't arrested initially, but he was when Alex Rosen confronted him with the police. And what a fall off. Guy started a cult and then got arrested. And then uh, he, Alex Rosen has come in a, a bit of a full circle. He recently confronted former first lady Hillary Clinton at a rally asking why her husband was on the Jeffrey Epstein flight log. Hey Hillary, why'd your husband visit Epstein Island 26 times? That's a valid question, to be honest. The attitude is sensationalist for Alex. He's trying to make content. He's trying to, to do what's right, what he believes is right. He's calling out creators, celebrities, anybody. He, he doesn't care. Politicians, it's it's good. It's, it's interesting. It's good that that guy's out there doing that thing, especially when the proper steps are taken to forward these cases to law enforcement and someone like Josiah ends up in fucking jail. On to Skeeter Gene. Bit funnier. Skeeter Gene is pretty funny. He takes this whole thing to an absolute new level with his content. He just surpassed 1 million subscribers. Congratulations, Skeeter Gene, the professional Chris Hansen impersonator self-referred. He wasn't always doing this, by the way, predator hunting. His first video was a six-year-old video, a music video about pumpkin spice lattes. I got a pumpkin spice drink, pumpkin on my wrist. He's been consistently posting since then, uploading epic content, pursuing predators. It's been successful. His first predator poaching video, he caught a man that was soliciting a 14-year-old boy. Very, very scary guy. Very scary looking dude. Dave, right? Dave, right? No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're, you're Dave. Dave. No, this, this is him. The guy just walks yeah, home. He just follows him home. He just walks home. The guy also admitted to being with two other 14-year-old boys. I can't believe that this is a thing that exists. Makes me feel sick. Skeeter Gene loves getting law enforcement involved in most of his sting operations because he hopes to see these disgusting predators put away with varying degrees of success. It's, it's, it's important to mention that, that these guys, the, the YouTube fellas, they're not as successful and consistent as Chris Hansen was when he was doing it with Dateline NBC, but it's also because it's fucking NBC versus YouTubers. They're doing a fine job. I really didn't even plan on actually having to, like, yeah, I said it in chats, but like actually being here in person is different than on a phone and a screen. Did you bring condoms with you? That's a good question, did you? I did to be safe, but I did didn't it. plan on using them. This fella showed up. Officers also showed up, but he didn't end up getting arrested. I don't exactly know why. Bad. Strange. He's just going home. I got, you know, I think it's best we all just, you know, wait for the police, the police to show up. This is back here. We have receipts for it. Mm. There's a meeting. Uh, this is the predatory. This is the predatory yep. investigation. Good, how's it going? So the neck here was meeting with what he thought was a 14-year-old girl for sex. In another video, a 57-year-old predator was detained. You want to stand up for me, all right? Who's going to detain you for a second, all right? So just put your hand on your back. Okay, let's get right. weapons on you. I did. We're at five. But then was released without charges. I don't exactly know it's why. I, I think in the second video's case, it's because in Cincinnati, if a sting operation isn't conducted by law enforcement, it's not valid apparently in the state of ohio um, no charges or convictions can be made if this sort of sting operation is not conducted by a law enforcement official these people did get away with their lives are forever ruined and they're immortalized on the internet for being <laughs> freaks a lot of the content from these chris hansen impersonators one self-referred it's typical Right? You meet up with the predator, they don't always get go to jail, that's just kind of what happens. <laughs> Sometimes things get fucking crazy. There was a video that was released not that long ago on Skeeter Jean's channel titled, Playing a Pred in Mortal Kombat 1. If he loses, I call the cops. Now this implies a predator's fate is dangled in front of them over a game of Mortal Kombat. Incredible! This video is, I, I've used the word legendary a lot, 
it is legendary. This is a legendary video. It begins with Skeeter introducing the predator. Big Herm is his name, or at least that's what he likes to be called. We are waiting for our potential predator here. He goes by the name Big Herm. At least this is what he tells <laughs> girls to call him. Not necessarily everyone, but it's an interesting thing. Some would say detestable. Now he did talk and talk about how he wants to quote unquote, uh, pipe out this girl. Big Herm, by the way, knows he's gonna be playing Mortal Kombat in this situation, but he, he thinks he's gonna be playing it with a girl that's there with him. But alas, it's, it's not, it's Skeeter. And before the man inevitably runs away, uh, when, you know, faced with, with, hey man, you're a <laughs> guess what, I know. Skeeter has to confront him and coax him into playing a game of Mortal Kombat so he can walk away if he wins. Before we let him go, we're gonna give him a choice. He's going to be able to play me in a first to three Mortal Kombat. And um, if he wins, he gets to walk away scot-free. And um, if he loses then, you know, unfortunately, we're gonna have to get the authorities involved. Skeeter confronts the guy and old Big Herm immediately knew what was going on. It's almost like these people know that this is a crime, but they still do it anyways. Strange. What's going on, Herm? Yes, sir. How you doing? Good, how are you? Go and have a seat, please. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm with the predatorial investigation unit, sir. No, 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 no. I'm not. Oh, no, 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 sir, no, no, no. You please have a listen, seat. Listen, listen, yeah, listen, yeah, listen. Yeah, yeah. Sir, okay. just have a seat, okay. please. Okay. So you're going to be in your yeah. best interest. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Skeeter Den does a great job trying to get Big Herm to self incriminate and say what everyone knows he is there for. He wants him to say it himself. It's okay. not what do you think, sir. I'm promising. Okay. You. I'm not, no, no, there was, we was just playing games. Just playing I, games? No, listen, Playing listen, a listen. pretty dangerous game. No, 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 no. I'm t I promise you, I'm, I don't have no background in that at all. And, I promise you. In what? I'm, nothing, I don't, I don't do nothing. I'm not like that. Then Skeeter gives him the big chance, the big moment. Hey man, prove yourself in a game of Mortal Kombat. I can give you a chance here. Okay, what I gotta do? Well, if you want this to all go away, yes, sir. we can, we can play in, we can play some Mortal Kombat here. And if you, you yeah, if you beat me, you get to walk away scot-free. Deal? And if you, if you lose, then you may go to jail tonight, Herm. It's hard not to feel bad for the guy a little bit, because you can see obviously he's ruined his life, but also at the same time, <laughs> don't feel bad. Before the game begins, Herm tries to redeem his character a bit and says, I don't run away. I don't run. I don't run away okay. and be stupid. I already done something stupid. I don't want you guys to think that I'm some... I already know what you guys think. Well, we're listening to your case, Herm. I'd rather you run away than try to meet children for uh, illegal things. S to be honest, Herm, I don't really know. Skeeter Jean chooses Lee May, and Herm plays as Sub-Zero, which is the amount of support that Big Herm is going to be receiving from his friends and family and loved ones and people on the internet after this video came out, comes out, comes, it's out, it's out. Sub-Zero, though. That was a really long-winded, poor joke. The button mashing begins. Skeeter has the upper hand. Oh, it's important to remember that Herm's fate hangs in the balance. His entire rest of his life is dependent upon this fucking game of Mortal Kombat. And if Skeeter is a man of his word, he's offered to let this predator run away. Just fucking scot-free, that's crazy. It's very close. Herm does win the first round. Damn, Herm, you, you might have me stumped. All right, I got one chance here. And he looks shocked at the result. Look at his face. Oh, shit. But he forgot that it's a three-round bout, and he's not safe yet. Skeeter then lets us, the viewer, know that he only wanted to let Herm think he was doing well. I sandbagged him the first round. I had to let him think that he was hot shit before I really turned up the volume on him. <laughs> Oh my God, Skeeter's good. He's good, and he handedly wins the second round, barely taking in a single hit. Oh, thank you. It's okay, Herm. Huh? Okay, I'm starting to remember a few things now. And then same thing, round three, Skeeter. Whoops, poor Herm's ass. It's starting to come back. Oh, it's just for documentation purposes, Herm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I'm trying to put him just under arrest one more time. This whole video idea was clickbaited and structured around the premise that if Herm, Big Herm won, he could go free. And if Skeeter won, he goes to jail, right? Or the police are notified at the very least. Well, Herm goes to leave. He collects his 
belongings, and then he's informed that he just got skeeted in 4K. And you just been skeeted in 4K. The boys follow Herm outside and he asks if he's going to be arrested. And then they inform him it's up to law enforcement because they're not law enforcement. They can't arrest people. In newsflash, the popo didn't show. Okay, motherfuckers? So he just leaves and that's the end. That's another predator gets away. Another Skeeter Gene predator gets away. Everything has been submitted and detectives are looking into it. And uh, that's all we can really do for now. Big Herm was free to go on this night as the police were not able to come out and address the situation. But his actions will not go unknown. For the very next day, we went to his local police department to make a report. Although his soul is protected for now, it is possible that he may one day find himself imprisoned in the nether realm with all the rest of the corrupted souls. That sounds more badass than going to jail. So I ask you guys a question. The whole dive into these to catch a predator type channels, are they effective? Do you think they actually work? They don't really send people to jail all that often. Josiah Misukami, different example. I don't even know if he's still in jail. Regardless of all that, there is credence in the things that these people do. And it is good that they uh, exist to step up and stop stuff. Or at least fucking humiliate people who do shit that police. Now, all that being said, the fact of the matter is... These guys are basically just vigilantes. And that's why Alex Rosen and Skeeter Jean, they don't get people arrested. They don't, they do humiliate them and they, you know, immortalize them on the internet, which that's good. And that's probably just as bad, maybe worse. I really don't know. I don't know what leads to more recidivism, being humiliated for the rest of time or going to jail for a while, like, which is where I... They, they don't go to jail, though. These guys are not effective at getting predators sent to jail. I mean, the whole EDP situation, that is massive. That's happened so many times. The biggest thing that came out of it was Gideon not even really being able to post a video of him running into EDP at a dialysis clinic. Like, he should just be in jail. The justice system doesn't like it when people act outside of the law. I want to know what you guys think. Is the consequence lasting enough for the Skeeter Gene and Alex Rosen type videos? Generally speaking, the 57-year-old guy, the dude in the, the, the one of the first Skeeter Gene videos, the people who just got away, EDP included, is the consequence bad enough to make up for them not doing it right and not being able to send these people to jail is the consequence of just being shamed. I think it personally is myself, especially with the case of EDP. I mean, that dude's life is completely ruined. By the way, we did have some information in regard to Josiah Mitsukami. Can't really show it, I think, because the, the video is deleted. Because the stuff that we found is exclusively for victims, witnesses, and legal representatives, not for idiots on YouTube. <laughs> but he's fucked. He's fucked. That guy is fucked. We did find that. He's fucked. So now this whole time I've been proposing the YouTube to catch a predator type people as uh, inferior to Chris Hansen in the original show that was backed up by NBC Dayline. How effective was that show? Because that's also important to note as well. And believe it or not, less effective than you'd might hope. A lot of the cases that were covered in To Catch a Predator were refused prosecution because of the tainting of involvement of amateurs. What are y'all doing? 25 dudes were caught in Murphy, Texas, and none of them were prosecuted because the cases were tainted with the involvement of amateurs. Classic, yeah, vigilanteism. Chris Hansen apparently is an amateur. He's pretty good at that, the, sitting, the whole sitting down thing. He's pretty ball baller at that. And only 24 of them even faced charges because one of the dudes committed And on top of this, the Murphy city manager that approved the To Catch a Predator operation lost his job the da for murphy texas refused to prosecute anyone despite the mayor acknowledging the fact that they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law and even the guy who committed <laughs> the sister that fell up sued them saying that the police acted as judge jury and executioner and that they were encouraged by an out of control reality show and chris may have even proved her point when he was talking about the assistant prosecutor that had shot himself last year in an interview and he said that he wished the confrontation would have happened at the office rather than the home because it would have been better television. They were doing this as a courtesy as opposed to make a big show out of it and arrest him at the DA's office the right. next day. Right? right. I had no control over that. I would have preferred television wise they go into the DA's office the next day because that's a big show. Oh, that's show. big on TV. But Absolutely. Whatever. It wasn't my call. Bad vibes from Chris Hansen. I'm going to be honest. He seems like a weird dude. The DA that dropped the charges had this to say The fact that somebody besides police officers were involved was what makes this case bad. If professionals had been running the show, they would have done a much better job. I guess that's true. But at the same time, come on, work with them, man. Work with them. Work with them.
work with them then. Y'all don't do nothing. You guys don't do nothing. You guys don't fucking do anything. So it just seems in general when entertainment is made out of sting operations, chances are pretty high it's not going to end well for anyone. It's going to be funny. It's going to be good television, but it's, there's not going to be anyone facing really any real consequences. People are going to get really sad and someone might blow, shoot in the direction of themselves. Now, after saying all that, what do you guys think? Do you think TCAP's better than these new YouTube fellas? Do you think they're all the same thing? Is it just out of control reality? Are they bad people that are doing a good thing? Or are they good people also doing a good thing? Or are they bad people doing a bad thing? If you think that, then you're probably a Anyways, I'd like to see the exact numbers of how many people have been arrested and then beyond that, how many people have been charged. From all the 13 videos we clicked on from Skeeter Gene, it was just under 50% arrest rate. And I can't imagine that all those people were prosecuted. Either way, I think it's good. I think it's awesome. I think it's really entertaining. I also think that they should be careful. And it's unfortunate that the government doesn't want to work with these people to make it more professional and elevate it to be an actual, an actual effective thing that everyone can win at and is also good TV or whatever. <laughs> Chris Hansen, <laughs> freak.